Now, Arthur Philip had his surgery this summer to remove floaters from his eyes. We're joined by Maria Musaji from Moorfields Eye Hospital to tell us more. Good morning to you. It's lovely to have you here. So I don't know who to ask, first of all, what exactly are floaters? Because you've talked about them quite a lot on this show, haven't you, about how they've impacted you? Yeah, and, and there are many people who have them and they just, you just get used to them. In fact, I think the NHS advice is, you know, sort of try and forget about them and they'll, they maybe go away. There are some people who literally it is debilitating and you cannot see through them virtually. And I have really good vision yeah. normally. In fact, um, we've got a, a, a video here <clears throat> and this is my left eye. Uh, and so that's, that's them. And when it goes black, they've asked me to look to one side and then look back. So that's them immobile. And then as I move, oh, yeah. that's what's swimming. Do they go across your my... eyes when you're reading? So, like, yeah. for example, when you're reading autocue, could one get stuck and yes. then you wouldn't be able well, to you've, read? Well, you've seen me at Dancing on Ice because the, the, the autocue at Dancing on Ice is uh, uh, on the other side of the ring. Yeah. Uh, and so if one sits in front of that, then, then that can can't... blur out a full line. Um, so if you're looking at the sky, it can look something like this. Yeah. Um, and But mine was like ten times worse, worse than, than that. that. Maybe a hundred times worse than that. When I had them, had them both done over the summer, um, and the first time uh, I lay in the garden with a clear blue sky, I burst into tears because it was the most extraordinary Aww. thing. For the first time in decades, yeah. there was no rubbish in my vision. Yeah. So, uh, Paolo Stanger is, the, is the, the surgeon that did my surgery, and we're hoping to have him in because um, he's got vids of the operation and all that sort of stuff uh, later on. Um, but, um, but let's just talk about them now. If there is somebody watching this who has them, what are they? Yeah, so floaters are essentially black dots that are floating around in your vision. Some patients can describe them as strands of hair or even insects, spiders or cobwebs. And what they actually are is the jelly within the eyeball. So your jelly starts to condense. It's lo it loses its moisture content, like our skin and the rest of mm. us. And it starts to shrink and condense. And it's when the light enters the eye and hits the jelly, it almost forms that shadow that you see, see as this floater. Mm. And so as you get older, the jelly starts to shrink and it can become more mobile. And that's why you start to see almost like a snowstorm of floaters floating in your vision. Yeah. And so what is the sort of normal course of treatment then with something like this? Well, just as Phil said, for the majority of people, and a lot of people do get floaters, we just tend, you tend to ignore them. And actually your brain can block them out for, for most people. So if you're engaged in a conversation, you won't notice it. Yeah. But sometimes if you look on a white background, you will inevitably see yeah. those floaters. Well, you know how much they drove me crazy. Yeah, I mean, yours was an extreme version of that. I mean, I, th yeah. I think I can sort of see slight, like when I look at it, I go, yeah, I can see it occasionally, especially when I shut my eyes and open them again. But no, like... Nothing like yours that, all was... the time. I could see them with my eyes shut. And yeah. that, that's oh, the no. thing. So, so when you've got patients who are very plagued yeah. by this, you can go forwards and have an operation where you essentially remove the jelly mm. of the body of the eye. So if you have a fast a vitrectomy, if you yes. have a full vitrectomy, then within a year, you're likely to get a cataract. That's true. If you have the partial vitrectomy, which I had, then that, you don't get the, uh, the cataract. And that's the pioneering edge of this, is the fact that I didn't, I wouldn't have the full vitrectomy because I've had lasered vision and my vision is really good. Yeah. Um, but I, so I didn't want to mess that up with, uh, you know, knowing that I was definitely going to give myself a cataract. But with this new pioneering surgery, you don't get the cataract. Yeah. And they actually did quite a large study two years ago, which they published of over 500 patients who had floaters that had a vitrectomy. Over 90% were really satisfied or very satisfied. 85% mm. said they had complete resolution of symptoms but 50% of those did develop a cataract within a year. So yeah. it's great that this new surgery can mm. hopefully avoid that. There, there are things, though, that you need to sort of keep an eye on, literally, and it yeah. can become more serious. And you say this is this flashing lights type of thing. Just explain that. Yeah, so if you've got floaters and they're long-standing, they're usually not, not to worry about. But if you get floaters that are like a snowstorm, fresh floaters, if you get flashing lights in the corner of your eyes that go on for over an hour at least, mm. flashing constantly, if you get a curtain-like sensation coming over your vision or a sudden drop in vision, you must go to an eye casualty because there is a chance that you've got a retinal tear 
or a retinal detachment, mm -hmm. and that's an emergency. Okay. And we need to see you. We need to either apply laser around that tear to seal it, or you might need to have an operation to remove the jelly and to actually uh, mm -hmm. replace the retinal It was retinal. actually that that was initially got me into the conversation, the yeah. fact that you could get rid of them, was the fact that as, your, as the, the sac pulls away from your eye, your retina, it can tug on it and just exactly. tug a hole. And in my left eye, it tugged a tiny hole, yeah. um, which they then but fixed very, very easily. And then I said, what can you do about this rubbish in my eye? Yeah. And that's how the conversation started. But, but that can be very serious. No, it wow. is serious. And actually, <clears throat> it's part of the ageing process. Well, people who are short-sighted have longer eyes naturally so everything's on attention so they're more predisposed to these tears and retinal detachments mm. but as we all get older and we lose that moisture content our jelly is fixed at certain points in the eye and as it's shrinking it tugs and when it tugs it can cause a tear sometimes it doesn't but then that's when the jelly becomes free in the eye and that's when the floaters can be more bothersome. So yeah. it's always good to talk about eye health because you need to keep your eyes healthy. Regular eye checks very important. Keep really time important. away from screens. Don't look at screens for too long. Spend time outside? Definitely. So a regular eye check is essential at least yeah. once a year. And I want to emphasise for children as well mm. because our eyes are developing up to the age of about eight. That's where we're getting all the signals. So good to just have an optician that you can see. And the pathways are passing yeah. to the brain. Yeah, and right. so we need to maximise that. Eating well, time outdoors Thank prevents short-sightedness. So, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Lovely you. to see you.